Psychology is not a science. <laughs> uh, um. Okay, it's, it's a science. Wow. <laughs> uh, yes, it is a science. Well, some of it is. Yes. I don't really know what I could say about that. Well, you'll get a different answer depending on who you ask. I mean, psychology is a very wide discipline. It goes from you know, one end that's practically sociology to one end that's very, very hard um, neuroscience, neurobiology. Psychology is a science um, because it involves and requires um, scientific methodology for its investigation. So if you carry out experiments in a way that is uh, objective as much as possible, if you're interested in replication, if you record your observations and expose them to the world for scrutiny, um, if you have a theory when you come to the hypothesis, when you come to the research and you try to falsify that theory through that experiment, then I would say it's a science and it doesn't matter what you study. I mean, I actually see psychology as a sub-discipline of biology because human beings and other animals are all driven by biology and psychology is, is really about how our, our brains and bodies function in this sort of social environment where we're interacting with each other. Many of us do use the scientific method, so we make hypotheses, we collect data, we look whether the data follows our hypotheses. So, um, in my view, psychology is a science. I think the best answer to this is um, to say that psychology is an incredibly vague word and um, it's a huge umbrella that includes um, you know a whole array of different things and unlike something like say chemistry or physics that umbrella includes things which are very qualitative so it would be things that would be difficult to measure probabilistically and statistically and scientifically, as well as things that are incredibly quantitative and that we can measure in those ways. Partly, I think people associate psychology with psychoanalysis. So for many people, the word psychology would bring up a sort of image of Freud. So um, understandably, you, you might argue that that is not a, a very scientific approach. And um, some psychologists don't use the scientific method. And also because of, there's a kind of uh, a public misconception of psychology, um, a kind of pop psychology is out there um, that's you know, no better than kind of horoscopes really, it's that kind of psychology. You know, people trying to convince you that, that they can tell what you're thinking or that, um, that they can hypnotise you to do this, that and the other or whatever. Psychology is a science. There is, a, there is a, a degree to which I agree with the idea that it's not a science. This professor, Walter Mischel, called it the toothbrush problem, which is the idea that psychologists are a bit like people all sharing the same bathroom. They all want their own toothbrush. They don't want to share them. And you see this in um, the journals that you read. Everyone seems to want their own theory or their own bit of, of psychology. And no one wants to really step on each other's toes and upset each other because of the peer review process. And so each person carves out their own little area and does a very special bit of psychology. I'm sure they are approaching that element, that bit, in a scientific way. But really science, if we look at physics, if we look at chemistry, if we look at biology, science is about theories that bring things together, that, that draw out common principles. It's not uh, generally an approach where you have separate rules for all the different kinds of possible things you could be looking at. The reason people probably think it's not a science is because humans are all individuals and this makes it slightly difficult for us to follow some of the more experimental procedures of biology or physics or chemistry for example uh, because we have to take into account such massive amounts of individual variability. But psychology is a science because psychological investigation, psychological research requires us to draw on scientific methodology using statistical methods of analysis. And psychology has suffered a little bit from this, from falling between two posts. On the one, on the one hand, we're interested in, essentially we're interested in human mind and human behaviour. 
So if you're interested in human behaviour, then you're always going to have an element of um, things which aren't hard science. So you can, you can measure behaviour to a certain degree, or observe behaviour. Um, and if, if you're measuring it, then you know, that is science. That's what science really is, it's measurement. So I would call myself a neuroscientist rather than a psychologist. In fact, I was incredibly surprised when um, I learned that what I do fits under the category of psychology because I never studied psychology. I think it could be a touchy subject for some of the people who are on the more qualitative side um, because, as I said, I think what they do is science, but maybe it's a little bit harder for them to explain why. But if you, if you really want to get some nitty gritty, you have to get into the, you know, you have to get, you have to get into, into a laboratory and conduct experiments. So the harder the grasp on hard science you get, the further, the further removed from everyday human behavior you get. Um, so there's always a constant battle between the two. Um, so you know, I'm interested in time behavior, um, but if I really want to nail it down and, and get measurements, then I have to get people into a lab and by its nature, it's always going to be slightly artificial. So you gain something on the one hand, but lose something slightly on, on the other. There may be an element of scientific snobbery. So those working in the harder sciences um, don't, don't necessarily understand the scientific aspects of psychology and therefore badge it in this particular way. It bothers me slightly, partly because I don't think it's really relevant. Psychology is psychology, you can call it a science or not. I think it bothers me perhaps if it's used to suggest that somehow it's a soft subject and this has lots of implications both for young people thinking about psychology and maybe being told in their school, oh that's a bit of a soft subject, well if you can't do maths or biology or chemistry, yes why don't you go and do psychology? Well you come and do psychology and see. I'm sure if you talk to any scientist, actually, they'll say that their, their science is misrepresented some way in, in the media. Um, and to some extent, it's probably our fault in the way we engage in the media. Um, but yes, it does, it does bother me that you know, people think it's one thing and then they get here to study it and find out it's something completely different. Sometimes I think um, students who come to study psychology are surprised by how much science there is or how much they need to get to grips with statistics, even if they're really um, working um, in, in topics that might not be considered that scientific. It's kind of perceived to be not really a science, so it's not actually being rated at the right level. It's not rated at the same level in terms of the cash per student as biology, for example, even though our students need a lot of equipment and facilities in order to learn psychology properly and apply it in a way that is useful to society. I think psychology is a bit like the sort of Midlands of science. So if you come from the Midlands, you're neither a northerner nor a southerner. But if you're a psychologist, you're neither fully viewed as a scientist. But some of the um, people in the humanities or social sciences wouldn't view you as fully belonging to their fold either. You have a scientific family. Uh, is this a dinner table conversation that ever comes up? Do you ever have, find yourself having to defend the corner of psychology or have you converted all your family to...? Um, I think when, when I first said I wanted to study psychology at university and I did a joint degree in psychology and neuroscience which was great because I got um, quite a broad grounding um, I remember it did raise a few eyebrows um, but um, my dad was convinced when I gave him a copy of The Astonishing Hypothesis by Francis Crick to read, and I think he felt if it was good enough for the Nobel Prize winner, then you know, perhaps it was, it was okay after all. 